This is something that we've been drilling through. This is why we've been drilling the holes. It's actually peat and silt mixed. And what happens, they blasted a new channel for the river when they built the reservoir, built a retaining wall, filled behind the retaining wall to put this new road in. This was in the late 1940s when they were accessing the reservoir. So on top of the Ice Age environment, we now have the modern environment. What happened during the, the severe rain event we had a few days ago, that the water got behind that retaining wall and started eating away at this. And you can see that this is a loose material. As soon as water gets in it, it breaks up, it washes away. What we're doing now is drilling through that soft material to find where we can put a firm foundation for a new structure to retain the road. If we were to found on that material and have another flood event, that material is going to wash away, we're going to lose the wall again. So what we're trying to do is improve on what was done before by taking our new wall down to a sound rock, which is the Thirlmere Tuff. So what we need to do as we drill is to drill through that loose rock, which is difficult because as you drill it, it tends to move, it locks against the drill bit, it's difficult drilling conditions. We usually go for something like three metres of rock that we can identify as in situ rock to be sure that we're not drilling through just a large boulder which would give us a false sense of security. As you can see behind me, the force of the water took away a concrete and stone retaining wall that was there before, destroyed it completely in a matter of hours. Gabions being a, a, basically a, a wire basket full of stones would not withstand the kind of force that we would expect this river to carry in a significant flood event. At the moment we've done no detailed design, obviously, we're still in the preliminary stages. What I envisage we will end up with is a reinforced concrete structure, a sort of inverted T shape with the flat, the head of the T if you like at the bottom, sitting on the rock, reinforced concrete wall, cantilevering from that, and above that and behind that, new engineered fill to support the road. The wall itself would be faced with similar to this rock material to blend in with the surroundings. We're in the National Park, we're well aware that we don't want intrusive hard engineering structures but a hard engineering structure is all that's going to survive the kind of conditions that we saw a few days ago. So the retaining wall will be faced with locally sourced stone to blend in with the surroundings to try to make it look as much as we can as though nothing ever happened. Um, obviously we're working adjacent to and within a watercourse which flows quite strongly even after a small amount of rain. We have to deal with that water flow as we're constructing the new wall. The other challenge obviously is getting the materials here, it's a remote location, so we'll have the challenge of getting the materials here and also ensuring that if the river does flood, none of the materials get washed into the lake causing an environmental problem. So there are, there are challenges, they can be overcome, we've overcome them in the past and we'll overcome them here. What we can see behind here is a large accumulation of debris. Geologically, that's head or colluvium material. It's a mixture of anything from the large boulders that you can see here 
down to sand and silt sized particles and it's quite unstable and the concern here is that as we start to excavate this material to expose the culverts to clear the road that it's just going to bring more debris down from higher up it's a bit like the the penny falls at the amusement arcade you remove one bit and then there's another bit comes behind it and so on and so on and so on there may be boulders of that sort of size perched in this material as we excavate they become unstable they start to roll down the hillside and then it won't matter if you've got a helmet on or not you're going to have to get out of the way pretty quick further problem here at this particular location that there are some abandoned mine spoil tips high up in the hills if they become unstable and fall into the valley and dam the stream and that dam then breaches we'll have another debris slide that engulfs the road there's probably a dozen or more of these types of water courses along this length of the lake each one of them is going to have to be visited and assessed before we can say that the risk of landslide is minimal there's evidence along the side of Thirlmere that when the culverts have become blocked the water has tried to find an alternative route to get into the lake and it's worked its way underneath the carriageway and ruptured the surfacing blowing it upwards so the additional concern there is that there may be voiding under the carriageway that there may be material washed out underneath the carriageway that we can't see the carriageway looks fine but it may be hollow underneath so once the road is cleared of all the debris and the water there will be a, a survey carried out using ground penetrating radar falling weight deflectometer and similar techniques to check the condition of the carriageway to ensure that there are no voids there any voids will have to be excavated filled and treated and the road resurfaced that will form part of the the final phase if you like when we've cleared away the imminent danger and we're getting towards reopening the road for traffic.